So you got a problem. Yeah, your problem is you don't have a lot of money, but you want fragrances that are versatile, that you can use in lots of different situations. Not much money, mm, but I want a dumb reach fragrance. Mm. Well, you're in luck because today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about 10 different fragrances that are really cheap. And when I say really cheap, that means you can get them for under $40, a lot of times under $30, some of these even under $20, assuming you shop at discounters. If you shop at full retail, that's my answer to you. That being said, if you really wanna support companies, shop at full retail. Now, uh, where was I? Yeah, 10 fragrances, ultra cheap, really versatile. Let's do it. Now, I'm not gonna list out the specific price of each one of these fragrances, but I will give you one hint here, one bit of advice. If you shop at FragranceNet, use the 35% off code. That's just a pro tip. Now, if you don't know what the 35% off code, as of this video, it's this. Through the magic of editing, the power of the internet, this is what it is while I'm talking to you. In the future, they will change it. I don't know when, but if they do change it and it's not that anymore, Here's what you do. Go to Google, okay? Type in fragrance net 35 off. I know that's super hard. It's a lot of steps, but that will give you the code. I tell this to you because it will save you money. All right, first up, let's go with the Jaguar Classic Electric Sky. This one I bought from Fragrance X not too long ago, and it has a bit of a similarity, or actually a decent amount of a similarity to a more expensive, very popular fragrance that countless guys have worn over the years. It's a big compliment puller, very versatile, hence the inclusion of this in this list. The fragrance it smells like is Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce. Of course, you could also go with Mont Blanc Legend, that's gonna give you a similar vibe, a similar feel to Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce also, and that one is pretty cheap too. That being said, this one is cheaper. This one has grapefruit, violet leaf, amberwood, and tonka. It's a bit fruit forward in the opening, quite sweet, but very appealing. Nice compliment puller. And a number of Jaguar fragrances actually are pretty good. They punch outside their weight class a little bit because they're very inexpensive, but they don't get the love that like Ferrari or Bentley or Mercedes Benz fragrances do. So if you're looking for a blue type fragrance, compliment puller with an Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce 5, check that one out. This next one is actually gonna be one of the more expensive ones on this list. I think when I looked it up before this video, it was somewhere in the low 30s, like 33 or something like that. And it is worth that price. It's Chrome Extreme from Azaro. This one has C notes, green mandarin, juniper, and cashmere as some of the notes in the fragrance. And it has a bit of a similarity to Aqua de Jo Profundo, which is a fragrance that I really, really love. And a lot of you out there do too. Now, one thing I don't need to tell you, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, is that Aqua de Jo Profundo is always going to be more expensive than Chrome Extreme. That's just how it is. And I mean, frankly here, they even got a similar color on the bottle to the Chrome Extreme as on Aqua de Jo Profundo. Again, another fragrance, very people pleasing, very versatile. C notes in here smell fantastic, mixing with that green mandarin in the opening. I think it's a fantastic scent for the price. Now this next one is ultra cheap. So when I said ultra cheap, this is really where you're reaching the very, the very bottom of the barrel, okay? We are scraping the bottom of the barrel. We are inside of the clearance bin. We're not just like sifting through the top of the clearance bin. We have dove into the clearance bin and we've, we've swum down to the bottom. We're in another dimension. This thing at discounters is like $12. So you gotta understand going into this fragrance what you're paying, $12 is not a lot of money. What I'm trying to say here is you can't go into a fragrance that costs you $12 and expect it to smell like a Bortnikoff or something. It's from Mandarina Duck. It's called Let's Travel to Paris. C notes, once again, in this fragrance, rosemary, apple, and musk. Kind of a fresh out of the shower fragrance, you know, just a really clean shower jelly type scent. Kind of a sporty, maybe gym fragrance. Obviously, it's not gonna smell hyper natural. Again, it, it's under $15. If we're talking though, spring, summer, daytime, casual kind of situations, it'll do the job. It's not gonna blow people's socks off, but it will have you smelling clean, fresh, and presentable. And at $12, I think that's, that's about 
not as good as you're gonna get. So we've got Let's Travel to Paris. Now let's go ahead and go to good old America from Perry Ellis. Pineapple, bergamot, amber, birch, some of the notes in this fragrance, along with a bit of a rose as well. Now this one gets compared to Creed's Aventus, and it does have an Aventus style vibe, especially when you first spray it on with that pineapple and bergamot in the opening. It's gonna give you very similar feel to Aventus. As it dries down though, it does go its own way a little bit. That lavender and the rose come out and it smells really, really, really good actually. It still does fly under the radar a little bit because first off, it's Perry Ellis. And I don't know too many people out there who are like, oh boy, I can't wait until that new Perry Ellis fragrance drops. I don't know what that was. He started out kind of like deliverance and then ended uh, like a used shoe salesman, not a car salesman, a used shoe salesman. So since nobody really seems to care because it's Perry Ellis, it, it flies under the radar, but it's really good. The quality for the price is fantastic. The versatility is through the roof. I mean, you've got stuff like Explorer and I'm not saying Explorer is worse than this. I'm not saying America you know, is above Explorer, but you've got fragrances like Explorer from Mont Blanc that are just blowing up, right? Because of that Aventus kind of spin that it has. And then America is just like, oh yeah, America, uh, explore. <laughs> That's the way to go. So America, even though it's under the radar a bit, really, really, really nice. The opening, very pleasing. And as it dries down, it, it gets, like I said, a little more unique, a little more of its own, its own thing. Now, let's talk about good old Coach for Men. This is one of the cheapy list staples. Pear, Kumquat, Ambergris Suede, and Amber Wood, some of the notes in this fragrance. This is, once again, your, your blue type fragrance. You know, any season, day, night, any situation, that kind of scent. Good amount of sweetness, fresh, modern, dry down. It's a really easy to wear, really easy to pull off fragrance. It's just, just one of those. And because it's one of those, a lot of people are gonna, you know, turn their head at it. Uh, no, <laughs> no more of that blue fragrance stuff for me. No, sir. But for the price, it is consistently one of the best versatile scents out there on the market. Smells similar to Jimmy Choo for men. That one's also pretty cheap. So you could go with that one as well. I think between the two though, if you offer up Jimmy Choo or Coach, I think I would go for Coach, which is why it's in this list. Jimmy Choo is not bad either though for the price. Not bad. Now let's throw it back to one that a whole bunch of guys have worn over the years that maybe doesn't get talked as much now as it used to, and that's Burberry Touch for men. Violet Leaf, Musk, Tonka, and White Pepper, some of the notes in this scent, does get a little bit powdery as it dries down. Doesn't really bother me, I think it smells great, but if you're the type of person that doesn't like powder in their fragrances, you might wanna steer clear of this one. Like everything here, very versatile. I would say this one over most of the fragrances that we've talked about already though, you can help skew it formal. And by that, I mean, you can pull it off in formal situations easier than you might be able to, uh, let's travel to Paris, for example. And Burberry Touch is one of those fragrances that I feel like a lot of guys just rocked as a signature scent for a long time. And so it had this kind of little cult of people, a cult following of people that rocked Burberry Touch. And then over time, you know, they kind of dropped off and started wearing other things. And then nobody really picked it up after that, other than the people that were wearing it from earlier on, closer to when it first came out. Next, let's go with a Ferragamo Aqua Essential. Now, uh, pretty much this whole line, Aqua Essential Colonia and Blue, those ones you can all typically find pretty cheap at discounters and they're all worth scooping up in their own right. This one has C notes, lavender, mint, and vetiver as some of the notes in the scent. Some people find a similarity between this one and Blue de Chanel, and also Aqua Essential Blue. Uh, people find a similarity between that and also Blue de Chanel. So yeah, it, it's, it's a blue fragrance. This one opens up nice and sweet, bit of mint there in the opening, nice masculine lavender through the mid, and then of course aquatic notes throughout. It's gonna trend more towards spring and summertime, obviously, but if you're somewhere air conditioned and that goes for all these fragrances, then, you know, frankly, who cares? If you're somewhere air conditioned 90% of the time, then uh, it doesn't matter if it's cold outside. So yeah, like I said, the entire Aqua Essential line worth checking out, especially for the price. Typically you can pick them up under $30, sometimes right in that $20 range, they're solid. Now let's go with the Lagerfeld Bois de Cedra. 
How do you like that pronunciation? <laughs> this bad. Cedar, violet leaf, citrus, and salt. Some of the notes in this fragrance. This line is great. Kind of like the last line. This one, anything that you can find, I think is worth picking up, assuming that they're at the price that I paid for them, which is just under $30 per bottle. So the other two fragrances in this line that I have are Bois de Vetiver and Yuzu. So obviously one has more of a focus on vetiver, another on citrus with Yuzu. So this one's gonna give you some salty citrus off the top. Again, fresh, bright, lively, really, 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 really smells good in the opening. One of those attention grabbing types of openings. As it dries down, it does get a little bit more, mm, I don't wanna call it basic, but basic is what I'll call it. You've got a little violet leaf in there that shakes things up a little bit, but ultimately it dries down to just kind of a fresh, modern, woodsy dry down with hints of, of cedar. Lagerfeld has a little bit of a bad rap for some of the fragrances that they put out, but that line is solid. And this one, I think it just has extreme versatility for the price. Now let's go with the Banana Republic. This one got a good amount of hype as being a go-to cheapy, and I think it still is. It's Black Walnut. Now, one of the issues with this fragrance is the performance. It is, uh, how do we, how do we say, uh, mm, crap. And when you look at the note breakdown, it becomes even more confusing as to how the performance could be so subpar. Cognac, tobacco, and cedar. That's your note breakdown. So you would look at that and think, why is it weak? I mean, probably uh, part of that, that answer lies in the, the fact that the, the expense of the oils that they're using uh, is low. So you're not getting, uh, you know, some high quality stuff with a lot of staying power. You don't have a, a big concentration going on here either. It is an eau de toilette, and I'd say it is a weak one at that. Now, of course, it sounds like I'm dunking all over it saying how bad it is, but it actually smells really, really good. <laughs> yeah, like really, really good. So there is your conundrum. You've got this fantastic sweet cognac and tobacco with this woody base and it smells so good. And while you have it on and you can actually pick it up, you'll just think to yourself, that smells good. That's what you'll think. You won't, you won't say that. You'll think that. And then you'll be the cock of the walk. You'll be just going along. Yeah, I know what smell good. No. And then, you know, 30 minutes later, you'll be like, let me get a whiff of that. <laughs> huh. It's gone. So just fair warning, it smells good and it'll let you down. So you can do one of two things or maybe three things. You could spray it on really, really heavily. You could spray it on all over your clothing and your hair, and that will hopefully make it last a little bit longer. You could bring a travel spray with you. You could decant a little bit and, you know, <laughs> occasionally excuse yourself to spray yourself with more fragrance because that's not weird that's cool or you could try to do some layering or mess around with molecule one or something like that but at the end of the day probably not gonna last that long but while it does uh it's good last but not least maybe one of the best bottles here actually penguin iconic blend these bottles if you have never held them before never seen them are surprisingly heavy duty. Like these things have some heft to them and they actually look really nice. Cap is a little bit cheap. I mean, it clicks snugly into place, so that's nice. But man, that bottle with the frosted glass for a fragrance that's right about 20 bucks and sometimes under 20, it's nice. This one has violet leaf, bergamot, geranium, and woods as some of the notes in the scent. I'd say it's a little bit on the classier side as compared to a lot of the fragrances that we've talked about here today, but it retains, of course, that versatility. The Penguin Blend line of fragrances is, in general, really solid for the price because, again, you're looking at about $20. And I think if we're just talking as much straight up versatility as you can get, so we're talking as wide and age range as possible, as many seasons as possible, daytime or nighttime, as many situations as possible. 
that iconic blend is probably your best bet. There are some fragrances in the line that are better suited for summer than this one. There are some that are maybe better suited for winter than this one. But just overall, this one is the best for being a dumb reach. It's got a little bit of sweetness in here. It's got some floral notes. It's got, of course, a, a fresh woodsy dry down. It's a really, really nice scent, finely balanced. And I think that for the price, it's a home run. So there we go, 10 ultra cheap fragrances. Not gonna cost you very much at all. And a lot of these you really could just throw into your cart if you're buying some other things. You know, if you're buying some more expensive stuff or, you know, just shopping in general, you wanna throw in something that doesn't really cost a whole lot so you're not in deep, you know? It's not something where you spend 70, 80, $90 and get it in, don't like it and feel angry or mad. These are a nice kind of almost stocking stuffer kind of thing. And by stocking stuffer, I mean just something that I would throw into my cart because I can't control my spending. And then I can say to myself, hey, that one's only $20. <laughs> Better buy it. I don't know. And then after the 50th bottle that you bought at $20, it's only $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. And you know I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.